morning, guys. I'm, I'm just going to start sharing this on Facebook and let's go from there. All right, 24 people here. We'll get started in just a minute. Um, I just want to make sure that everything is working right. And here we are. All right. Hey Dave, how are you, buddy? All right. Okay, guys, I'm, uh, I'm Scott Phillips, all of you know me, I think. Hey, George. Um, hey, Ed. I'm here to answer the question you all want to know. And, uh, and I think the question we all want to know is, is crypto fucked? And uh, yeah, let's look at it today. So three months ago, um, everyone was gripped by crypto mania, me included. And here's a little commentary of the way the last couple of months have felt. Really thought I was gonna be insta rich right here. And then this was a bit of an oh crap moment. And then we had about a month of this is completely fucked. And then it got even more fucked. And then it bounced really, really hard. In the last week, in the last week, it's 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 wiped off an, uh, over a month worth of worth of bearish price section. And today's webinar is really about exploring are we okay? Is there a risk of further downside? Um, what is the risk of downside at this point? Like those are the questions that I want to explore. And also I want to explore what's changed because you can't have an event like that, which was uh, a greater than normal. Uh, you know, Bitcoin usually has 40% crashes. This was a 50%, you know, it's 20% bigger than normal and, and things change after that. So specifically, we want to ask ourselves, is it still a bull market? And we want to ask ourselves, how do we know the bull market isn't over already? And the next thing that we want to talk about is what are realistic price targets in context? Does the recent events change our price targets? And lastly, if you're planning on buying here, should you buy more? Should you buy in here? Should you scale in or should you scale out on a bounce, like bank some profits, get back to break even, lower your risk? So we're going to talk about all of that today. So you might think that with, with Bitcoin trading back around 38,000 down from 64, you've missed, the, you've missed out, it's over, it's one and done. And that investors who bought in the last few months are stupid bag holders who will be waiting for years to get their money back, like this guy. And that if you somehow pluck up the courage to buy crypto right here, that you'll be the sucker who tries to catch the falling off before it drops again. And you probably laughed at those poor saps or if like me, I held through the last two months of losing money. Um, I thought at times that I'd made a terrible mistake and, and there was a couple of moments when I really thought that the bull market was hanging by a thread and it could have gone, it could have gone bad. But this couldn't possibly be more wrong. And it sounds like a big claim, and it is, and I'm going to prove that to you in a moment. The bull market is on. It's on very strongly. Um, all the objective evidence is it, it never ended, and um, you can see how strongly it's roaring back. So in the last week, crypto's made a stunning reversal. This chart was from last night. And you can see the character very clearly change from the last month of, like, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So like all one-way traffic. Bullish bar, bullish bar, bullish bar, bullish bar, bullish bar, bull, bull, bull. Bull's totally in control. 
so the the objective evidence is that the sellers have all been exhausted because there isn't a seller to be seen. Sellers, the evidence of our sellers is from the lower wicks of every candle. If you look at the lower wick of this candle, very few sellers. Lower wick, very few sellers. Lower wick, very few sellers. Small lower wick, small lower wick, small lower wick. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, but still it's very small lower wicks. That's what we want to see. And today I'm going to show you why the recent drop is the best thing ever to happen to crypto prices long term. And I'll prove to you that not only is the bull market not over, it's actually just getting started. And we're going to talk about why, thanks to the crash, my price targets for Bitcoin have been raised a lot, um, as much as 100,000 per Bitcoin. And that actually makes sense because we get paid for taking risk and we're taking more risk and more return is built into the game, right? So, so serious question, if I offered you a bet where you had a 70% chance of winning and a payoff of 138 to one, would you take it? Because that's what we're going to that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the real odds right here, right now, today. The best time in the last five years to buy crypto was May 2020, and and was as in past tense because actually right now is a much better time. The best risk reward opportunity is not buying way back here. The best risk reward opportunity is buying right here. We're going to talk about why that is today. Um, and the market is moving so strongly, every day that you delay puts the risk reward less in your favor. Like it's still, in, it, it's amazing now, like, like a once in a lifetime bet, but you know, if you wait till back up here, those odds are still good, but just not incredible anymore. Now, the thing about crypto is that we know how the bull market story ends. And because it ends the same way every single time. And what I mean by that is that crypto bull markets, every single one, they end with this complete craziness mania. And we know what that looks like. We've seen it in other markets. We've seen it a lot in crypto. It ends with like this full on craziness. With people quitting their jobs to become full time crypto traders, with people selling their houses to YOLO in on crypto. Um, in 2017, at the peak of the madness, I couldn't walk into my jiu-jitsu gym without all these like bum pro fighters talking about crypto as though they actually knew something. And, you know, it, it got really annoying and, and it should feel really annoying. Like I really, like I just, like some sort of craze that's just like taken, caused people to take leave of their senses. And, you know, people will be super annoying about, Bitcoin evangelism, you know, do you have a moment to talk about Bitcoin and, and our Lord and Savior Satoshi Nakamoto? And it's, we know what that looks like. And what we had a couple of months ago, it just wasn't it. It was like frothy. It was like people bullish on crypto, but it just wasn't it from a number of perspectives, which we're going to cover. It. The thing is, we don't know. We only know the ending. We don't actually know the rest of the story. Um, there will be more crashes along the way. And uh, this won't be the last one, for sure. And you simply can't make 10,000% returns. The, um, uh, the last two bull markets in crypto have been 9,600% and 28,000% returns. You can't make returns like that in a straight line. It's just like actually impossible. If it was if it was possible, every hedge fund in the world would be balls deep in crypto and 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 it'd be a boring old man market. It just can't, it just can't happen. So every time this happens, as in you know, a 40, 50 percent decline, it shakes a bunch of crypto traders back into the sidelines. And those of you who own crypto, you must have been tempted to sell. Those of you who didn't sell, I salute you, but the ones who did sell, those same guys will be the ones who FOMO back in when Bitcoin is above 200,000. And the dirty secret of crypto is that without the wild swings, crypto becomes just another boring old man market with 20% gains in a good year, like stocks or like, oh, wow, stocks did 30% this year. Oh, wow. Um, these periodic crashes, every time they happen, they extend the life of the bull market. And we're going to talk about in 2017, each of the four crashes really extended the life of the bull market. So you should be hoping for more of them, not less of them. Because 
pullbacks are the fuel that powers the bull market. And, and how does it do that? It by shakes, shaking weak traders out. So what happens is when you shake out the weak hands, the only people left who hold crypto are the ones who are actually not going to sell until they get a really good result. So you have buyers who aren't planning on selling, who aren't concerned about a little wiggle in the price, who if the price drops 20% now, they're still in, they're still good. It's a very, very different scenario than it was a couple of months ago. So the stock market is a device for transferring money from the patient to the impatient, says Warren Buffett, and he's right about that. So like I said, we only, we only know how the story ends. And the story ends with a big blow-off top. It's always a blow-off top in crypto. It's always something that looks like the South Sea bubble or the Tulip bubble or Bitcoin in 2017 or Bitcoin in 2014 or Bitcoin in 2013, 2012 or 2011. All the Bitcoin bubbles look exactly the same. They look like they're almost going vertical at the end and they look extremely, extremely bullish right at the end. But only the ending we, we know. We don't know the rest of it. We don't, we don't have any idea how the rest of the story plays out. We don't know which coin's going to moon. We don't know when the market will go ballistic. We don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know how many crashes we have to deal with on the way. And that kind of sucks, right? Like there's a whole lot of uncertainty about this situation. You don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But the beautiful thing is we know the ending. We know what the ending looks like. And so all the rest of this stuff, we can work around. And I want to start by telling you that the main game, and the, the game that really matters, is to take a stash of Bitcoins. And right now those Bitcoins are trading around 38,000. You want to multiply that stash of Bitcoins by five to 10 times. How do you want to do that? You want to do that by trading altcoins only in the strongest phase of the market using a proven and battle tested system. That's what you want to do. Whatever Bitcoins you have now, you want to turn those into five times as many. And then you want to cash out that giant pile of Bitcoin when one Bitcoin is trading for 250 to 300,000. Now, my price targets have been extended because the crash was so severe that automatically extends the upward potential of any bull market. Any big swings mean it's a high volatility market, right? It's not a low volatility market that can edge up forever. It's a high volatility market with crazy roller coaster ups and downs. Well, with the roller coaster down, you also get the rocket ship up. So, in my view, because you only know the ending, the ending looks something like Bitcoin 250 to 300,000. What you should be doing is trying to multiply your Bitcoins until then. Now, if you did that, which is one Bitcoin today, buying 38,000, you're going to know if you're wrong if Bitcoin fell below 29,000. And what I mean is that if Bitcoin falls below 29,000, I'm almost certainly wrong. The, the system will, will almost certainly switch back off into cash. Um, I will have made a big mistake. And I'll know that I'm wrong very, very quickly. So that low that we had last week should never, ever, ever be threatened again in the bull market. If it's a bull market, that low should never be touched. And so that's a wonderful thing because right now we know when we're wrong. Your real risk per coin is $9,000 per coin. And so what I mean is like you buy here and you're wrong here. Compare and contrast with buying here, the only other place you could have to say that you were definitely wrong was all the way down here back at 4,400. So you're buying Bitcoin at 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, and you're wrong at 5,000. So you're risking 25, 30, 35, 40, 50,000, 55,000 of Bitcoin is your real risk, because you don't know if you're wrong until back there. Whereas right now, you know you're wrong here. If this goes below here, Bitcoin is well fucked. And, and that's just the truth of it. I don't think it's gonna happen, but if it does, it's a beautiful thing to know. You don't wanna just be stuck hanging on indefinitely. The further we rise off the 29,000, 
housing lows, the more your risk rises and the more your risk reward shrinks. So if you buy here, you've got a risk reward. If you buy here, you've got less, um, less reward. And that goes down very, very quickly. Your reward if you just 5X your Bitcoin stash, and I've done much more than this in the last run, and the Bitcoin price ends up at 250,000. And I know that sounds a lot, but it's actually really conservative. And I'll show you why in a moment. Your risk is 9,000 and your reward conservatively estimated is 1,250,000. And that's a payoff of 138 to one. That's stupid. That's like for a financial bet in 2021 on a major market that you can trade in size, that is a stupid, stupid, stupid payoff for something that isn't a crazy bet. The odds of it happening aren't remote. In fact, it's, it's the most likely, it's actually the most likely thing to happen. Because remember, we've got this unique anomaly of crypto markets. And the anomaly is that because supply is very constrained, there, well, it is constrained. There's no more Bitcoins printed. At some point, those Bitcoins will go vertical simply because there's not enough people to sell their Bitcoins and, and, and it shoots the price up and that shooting the price up makes people love crypto and then they buy crypto and they tell their friends and it just goes vertical, vertical, vertical. We know it does that again and again and again because we've all seen it like 10, 20 times happen. And so that doesn't happen except in very rare situations in stock markets and commodity markets and FX markets. You might be waiting 10 years to see that in, in a stock market, but it happens every couple of years in a crypto market. So the fundamental difference between crypto and regular markets is what the real world hasn't, what the finance world hasn't woken up to. And this is why this bet is mispriced. It's a totally mispriced bet. And today I'd like to discuss the historic events in the last month. And I, and I want to talk about what's changed. And of course, things have changed. Now, I need to explain that hidden within the blockchain itself, it's a competitive advantage that nobody has figured out yet. Uh, because every transaction is recorded on the blockchain. With little data mining, um, there's a great API that I use. I can figure out exactly how much profit or loss every individual trader has. And just a few of the things that we can find out about crypto markets that you can't do with stocks. We can find out what percentage of traders are in profit, what percentage are in loss. We can see when traders sell, are they selling at a loss, which is capitulating, like giving up and going home, which is what we want to see. Or are they selling at a profit and banking their profits and getting out of the market? So we have like an X-ray vision on, on how do people feel when they exit? People are happy when they win, sad when they lose, blah, blah, blah. We can tell that whether or not the buyers are whales or whether or not they're small buyers. We can see when the miners are selling and the miners are the biggest source of selling pressure in the market. So it pays to watch them closely. When coins are taken to off-chain storage, we can see it. And, and those off-chain coins aren't being held on an exchange or on a, on a chain. They can't be easily sold. They can't be easily transferred. So you kind of know that they're at those, those coins when they go to cold storage, statistically, they're out of the game in terms of selling pressure. And the last thing that we can see is that when coins are sold, they're held for years, like long-term investors cashing out, which usually happens you know, from halfway through to, to, to the end, you see long-term investors start to cash out. Or have they just been held for a few days, which is just short-term traders playing swings. So these are really, really interesting kind of X-ray vision things that we can work out with the crypto market that you can't do in other markets. And this is a game-changing competitive advantage just on its own, but there's more. So for the first time, we have an exact picture of what a market top looks like. And... And by that, I mean, we know precisely, precisely what human behavior looks like at a market top. And we can match what's happening with what we know a market top will look like because it's looked that way every single time so far. So let's start with the big question. So is the, is the bull market over? Um, first place to look at it, is new user growth. So I want you to look at every other previous top. Like let's look at the last four market tops. 
And this one, this is the market top here in Bitcoin. This is new user growth, this pink line. You can see how from the very second after the market peaked, new user growth fell off a cliff. 2013, new user growth immediately fell off a cliff, like a week after the peak. 2014, same deal. New user growth immediately fell off a cliff. 2017, oh, what a fucking surprise. New user growth completely fell off a cliff. Now look up here. Look at where we are right now. Not only did user growth not fall off a cliff, it's at new highs. This dip was aggressively bought by new users. So let's, let's take another look at that a bit more closely. So this is the first bull market top. You can see this is the price and this is the user growth. Immediately fell off a cliff. Immediately fell off a cliff. Immediately fell off a cliff. In 2017, you can see like it immediately fell off the cliff. It's one of the things we use in our trading system too. Um, it's one of the three things. And it's not triggering. You, new user growth is just going up and up and up. This, grip, this dip is being aggressively bought. And that is completely inconsistent with the market top. The top's not in, the bull market's not over. So uh, what I have here is kind of interesting. So let's start with this pink line here. What we have here is the growth of the supply held by different size traders. So these ones, other guys with 0.1 Bitcoin to one Bitcoin. So from, you know, three and a half thousand to thirty-five thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. You can see this pink line. This is from March, May. It's just continued to climb up. Retail investors have aggressively bought this dip. How much have retail investors aggressively bought the dip? Since May 19th, they bought it by 37,000 Bitcoin. This blue line here, these are the guys with 100 Bitcoin to one Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, 100 Bitcoin to 1,000 Bitcoin. So these are whales. So these guys have been aggressively buying right through May. From May 19th to now, They've sold off 17,000 Bitcoins, but that's on the back of accumulating an enormous amount of Bitcoin first. So they were buying this dip and they've, and, and they've kind of stabilized, but this is a very small drop off. So the next thing I want to look at is medium-sized traders, traders with a balance of 10 to 100 Bitcoin. So that's these yellow guys. And they were aggressively selling into that rally until the dip, they've aggressively bought the dip. So these are guys with between 10 and 100 Bitcoins. So I guess these are guys with, um, you know, a million, to a, a million to a few million bucks in the game, aggressively buying. The whales, what are the whales doing? These are guys with 1,000 to 10,000 Bitcoin. These are serious money. This is like hundreds of millions of dollars. They were selling into the rally, but so all the, all the way January, February, March, while Bitcoin was going up, they were selling. And now they've started buying again. And you can see on the hard right edge, they're buying quite aggressively. So let's go over that again, because it's important. Retail is heavily buying. Medium traders are buying. Whales, big whales are buying. And the smaller type of the smaller type of whales with a hundred to a thousand Bitcoin, they already bought and they're holding steady. So I want to I want to show you some magic. I want to show you how all this works. And if I know when you bought. I can estimate how much you paid for your Bitcoins. So I know if you bought your Bitcoins in 2011, you paid five bucks for them, right? I can estimate how much you paid. I can work out how much paper profit you have. 
And once I work out that, I know that people get greedy and crazy when they make too much money, when it's all unbanked, when you're just letting it ride and, and it consumes your whole life and you go crazy. And I know because I've experienced that and I've seen it in other people and it happens every single time. When I plot, plot the paper profits and divide it by market cap of Bitcoin, I can see exactly when every single bill market has ended and when every single bear market has ended too. So this is how it works. So on the left-hand side, this is on average traders are breaking. Here is 100% profit, which is obviously impossible. 50% profit, things start to get things start to get things start to get exciting and crazy. And above 75%, things really things really go into euphoria. So what we're looking for here is you can see that in these early bull markets don't look like much here, but if you were actually trading them, they were pretty significant pullbacks. That's on because it's on a log scale. Picked every one of the first three bull markets, tops. When traders go into negative, it picks the bear market. Picks the next bull market, the double pump one. Picks the 2014 top, the first time it topped a thousand dollars. Got the absolute bottom of the bear market in 2015, and within two days of the top in. 2017, and also the exact bottom in 2019, March. And most significantly, we don't have a top here. So this is probably the most significant slide that I'm gonna show you today. So the real question like that, like if everything hinges on one thing, it's, May was pretty crazy. Was that crazy enough? And we can see that the May highs were not a top in the euphoria zone. The new user behavior did not look like anything that you could say the bull market is over. And that although the, the May highs were frothy and traders were greedy, it did not extend into the same level of euphoria, which is characterized as every other top. So either this top is a drastically different totally brand new thing, which, you know, it's not impossible, nothing's impossible, or it's still on. And what this is here, this is called MVRV Z score. So it's dividing by Z score, which is the standard deviation of returns. So this is realized profit divided by standard deviation of returns. So what this does is it shows us very clearly what a top looks like. A top looks like a spike in risk adjusted returns. In, in fact, that's actually a fair definition of what a top is, spike in risk adjusted returns. And you can see that all of these bull market tops are crazy big spikes. And this one's a medium spike, like the ones along the way in 2017, maybe even a little bit bigger than those, but it's nothing like the other four bull market tops. Like nothing at all. That's not what a top looks like. So overall profit levels, this is the, uh, the profit of the, the net unrealized profit of the market. And this is it on the left-hand side. So break even 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%. 50%, 60%, 70%. So on average, the market is at around 50% profit, which is the last time this happened was really back November, December 20. So we've turned back the clock. We're effectively starting again. And we can expect another leg like this. We're just starting from here. So let's talk about some conclusions. Um, what do we know? We know that we have a bull market that has just had its first significant pullback. We also know that that pullback was about 20% bigger than normal. We know that in 2017, there were four pullbacks, which we're gonna examine in detail before the eventual top. So if you think that this can't happen again, sorry, it probably will happen again, and, and you want it to happen again. The more every pullback extends the life of the bull market, and that's what you want. 
And we know that there's strong evidence that the top two months ago was not a final top. And we know that the overwhelming odds are for at least one, probably two, and maybe three more legs up. So in terms of legs of a bull market, three and four are the three or four legs are the most of a, of a bull market with interspersed with a significant pullback is the most common statistical um, way that it plays out, which is what Elliott wave theory is based on, even though it's bullshit. Two legs is not as common, but still possible. Three legs is normal and four legs is an outlier and five legs is very strange. So we can bet on at least two legs up, hope for three and, and maybe we get four. So what else do we know? We know that 72% of the time, the second bullish leg in a bull market is the strongest. It's highly unusual for the second leg to be weaker than the first leg. And that's very important because if you think about the last leg took us from 5,000 to 64,000, the next leg's going to be stronger. Five to 64,000 is what? Crazy numbers. It's going to be even crazier than that, according to the numbers. So we know that two or more bullish legs up, or even one more, takes us into crazy number territory where Bitcoin over 300,000 actually becomes possible. Um, this is going to be extremely scary to trade, by the way, because to get there, it has to do it at high, at high volatility. And high volatility means the thing's going to be going up or down 20% of the day. It's going to be crazy. So this is a zoom out from right back to 2012. Like, $200,000, $300,000 Bitcoin, this is a, a scale on the right. It sounds crazy now, like Bitcoin's at, at, Bitcoin's at 30, 35,000, 38,000. How can you even talk about, you know, 8Xing, 10Xing? Well, here's what it would look like. Does it really look that crazy? Like, like look at this last one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Doesn't look that crazy when you zoom out, really. Look at this previous leg. Crazy numbers really can happen. So we have very strong evidence that the weak hands have been shaken out. And what I mean by that is that I got a number of calls from, uh, from clients and friends all within two hours saying they were thinking of, uh, they were thinking of uh, stopping trading and just totally shaken and broken by the whole experience and I can't deal with this anymore and, and a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. And the evidence is very clear. We have no sellers left. Everyone who was going to sell sold on that day. And the reason we know that happened is because under pressure, people tend to behave in packs. They behave in mobs. And the guys who were going to sell, they all sold on that terrible day last week. And since then, we haven't seen a single seller. And only long-term holders remain, and, and the long-term guys. You bought at 20, you watched it go to 40, it's back down to 30, and now it's 38. If you've been through all that, you're not selling. So it goes up to 50 and back down to 30, and you're not selling. You know, it goes up to 100 and down to 50. You're not selling. Like, they, like those guys, they won't sell because they've already been through this. And it's very significant. In fact, it's probably the most significant change in the bull market is when you shake the weak hands out, you armor plate it. And what I mean by armor plating is that you take a whole pile of your traders and you put them on the sidelines and you say, you're out of the game. Those traders initially hate, if you got shaken out of your Bitcoin positions, you bought it, bought it 60, you got shaken out at 29, um, because you thought it was going back down to 10 or whatever. You hate Bitcoin right now. You secretly hope it goes to zero. You're like, fuck Bitcoin. That was a terrible idea. Stupid fucking shit. Fuck. Bitcoin goes back to, to 38. You're like, oh, it's just a dead cat bounce. It's going to be fucked again. And you're hoping it goes down. You don't buy back in straight away at 40. Maybe it's at, at 70. You're like, oh, I'll buy again. But on the next pullback, it's safe now. And that pullback never comes doesn't come at 80, doesn't come at 90, doesn't come at 100. And then by 120, you're finally feeling confident enough to buy. And then the pullback comes. So those weak hand traders getting pushed to the sidelines 
That's the key thing that we want to see. So the risk reward right now is better than any time in the bull market so far. So if you buy here for 25, you're wrong at five. You're risking 20,000 in Bitcoin. You buy here for 38, you're wrong at 29, you're risking 9,000 in Bitcoin. You're risking less. And for those of you who aren't in the system, I'm telling you it's not too late at all to make generational wealth for you and your family with crypto. It's not too late to cash out next year at the exact top. And don't forget that we know that the second leg is overwhelmingly promises to be stronger than the first leg. That's a unique advantage that we, when you're buying crypto, hoping that there's going to be a first leg, you don't know how strong it's going to be. You don't know what's going to happen. You didn't know if it was going to peter out. Is it really a bull market? Now we know it's a bull market. We know we've got a low, low risk entry point. And we know that the next leg promises to be stronger than this leg because it almost always is. And that's a well-documented feature of bull markets and it's known as a third wave. So you can accumulate this wealth even if you're starting from nothing, even if you don't know anything about blockchain, even if you don't know which coins to buy without relying on luck, tips, without having to waste time on endless research. And you're gonna accumulate this so fucking quickly. And we know this because we see it every time that you will barely comprehend that for you, everything's about to change. And I want you to think of all the things you'd have to you wouldn't have to care about if money didn't matter anymore. For me, there might be a few luxuries I didn't have before, but, but nothing really. The real change is the freedom you're going to experience and your new level of self-respect. And I've personally experienced that. And two years in a row now, I've made a million dollars from the market. And, and I feel fucking great about my trading, to be honest. Like, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm very satisfied with what I've been able to accomplish. So for my whole trading career, I've heard stories about uh, the great traders from the past. And, you know, the guys like Paul Tudor Jones, Peter Brand, Ed Sakota, my old mentor, Linda, my old mentor, Al, my old mentor and others. And, and these guys, they all had, right at the start, they had one breakout year. And mostly there was a fair bit of luck. You just got a bull market and a breakout year. You were a good trader, right place, right time. And you wrote it up and then you've, got, then you've got a big bankroll and now you're a trader. And they had one historic bull market. And they wrote it with skill and courage into a small fortune. And then they were able to relax and turn that small fortune, slow and steady into a great fortune. safe and secure that they'd never have to fear blowing up an account. They'd never have to trade recklessly to try and make it back after a mistake. I'm, I'll never do that stupid stuff again. And I've been trading full-time for 11 years now and I've never ridden a runaway bull market right to the end. I totally missed out on the stock bull market. Didn't make a dollar from it. Before this year, the biggest amount I'd withdrawn from my trading accounts was only hundred grand. And that was for my wedding, which I needed to pay for. Um, I, you know, I, feed my family off my trading accounts, but it, it's been a slow grind. And this year I pulled out 495 grand. And I don't even think I have the right to call myself a successful trader until I do at least one time in my life, you know, ride one bull market, ride that wave right to the beach and ride that into real life changing wealth. And nothing's gonna stop me doing it, but nothing at all. And well, except except the market, but I can't control that. And I'd be really thrilled for you to experience that alongside of me. I think it's going to be a wonderful, it's already been a wonderful life-changing experience and, so, and, and the best bits ahead of us. So I can imagine you checking in on me from time to time, just letting me know how good it is having true freedom in your life. And I can imagine how proud of yourself you are for sticking with the system. And I'm really proud of my guys who stuck with the system through the downturn that, because that's what being a professional is. And the guys who stuck with it through the downtimes, their payoff isn't luck. They've earned it. They've earned it from their courage. They've earned it from their wisdom. They've earned it from their skill and their big balls. And what I've learned from sticking through a pullback is that no way in a million years could I have done it without a system.
just couldn't have done it. Like, I'm just not good enough. I would have puked out at the lows. I would have been watching those charts 18 hours a day. I would have been terrified with fear. I wouldn't have been talking to my wife. She would have said, what's wrong? I go, nothing's wrong, baby. I'm just worried about the trouble. But instead, you know, my wife and my kid look at me like I'm some kind of superhero these days. It's fucking amazing. And, uh, and I want that for you. I want your partner and children to beam with pride when they talk about you and what a legend you are and how you changed it all for them. And, the, and the life is before this and then after this. And it all changed when daddy did the good thing. And the smug smiles are going to be wiped right off those who thought you made a terrible mistake. And instead of sarcastically asking, how's your trading going? Your relatives will be asking for your help to figure out their own path to the gold rush. And that sounds great, doesn't it? But the fact is that right now is the best buying opportunity of the bull market so far, just because your risk is so low. We never had what we knew before is that point where we're wrong. And this is the critical thing. If it drops below here, just out of the game, whoop, well, that was a mistake. The real risk you're taking is lower than at any point since way back in May 2020. This was just after the uh, coronavirus crash. I don't know about you, but I didn't have the balls to invest back then. Everything was looking pretty shady. And the reason this is so baked in is that in crypto bull markets, the truly explosive gains happen not at the start of the bull market, but right at the end. And if we look at the 2014 bull market, 90% of the gains happened in the last month, 90%. And in the 2017 bull market, it was pretty strong, but in the last month, 60% of the gains happened. That's how it's gonna happen. You know, Bitcoin will be some crazy number like 150,000. And then the next thing you know, like a couple of weeks later, it'll be 300,000. It'll be like some stupid, stupid thing. It'll just be extraordinary. And you will need a system to tell you what to do, because you'll turn into an idiot, because I always turn into an idiot when it happens to me. And you might not be aware that what just happened in crypto isn't even unusual. Like I mean by the, the, the big drawdown, and it's happened over and over again. So uh, these are the magnitude and duration of bull market corrections. So this is the 2015 to 2017 bull market. We have one at 38.6%. We have a 41%, we have a 38%, we have a 37%, 34%, 41%, 39%, and 30 So in 2017, we had five of these, not all of them really. The bull market wasn't really super, super on into that. So I'd call it four big ones. But you can see normal pullback is around a 40% in a bull market. And in the 2018, we had 72%, the coronavirus crash. Oh, sorry, that was not the coronavirus crash. That was the crash right before the end of the, the bear market. Um, we have 31%, 26%, 18%, and 32%. So up until now, the pullbacks in the 2021 bear mar bull market have been much less than the pullbacks in the 2017 market. So what we're experiencing is just the law of averages catching up. This one was a bit bigger. The other ones were a bit smaller. And that's why it caught us all by surprise, me too. So what's my point? The point is that the recent pullback has clearly just ended. It's very unusually clear it's over. Um, I have no problem staking my whole reputation that um, the selling is done. There are no sellers. It's going up. It's the best risk reward opportunity in many years. And will you have the courage to act? And, and many investors won't have the courage to act. And I, I don't blame them, to be honest, because we've all heard horror stories about traders getting wrecked in crypto bear markets and, and fuck, I've just been wrecked. And, I've, and you know, thankfully, I put some money out. But my original experience getting wrecked was one of the worst you've ever heard. I, and I developed this system after I wrecked myself trading altcoins in 2018. I bought more on the way down. I came late to the game. I bought five Bitcoins about here. And I started trading them in and out of 
Bitcoins into altcoins. I traded those altcoins like a maniac, doing a really good job. I was up 300% really quickly. And then I fucked it up. I watched Frozen like a deer in the headlights while my account declined actually over 90%. And I'll tell you a full story in a bit, but I was supposed to be this like guru guy and like this big time price action expert and people were asking me for advice. And I totally fucked myself, like right beginner error. And I felt like a failure for a long time. And it bled off into me doubting myself. Like I, it was actually the first time that I doubted, like, should I actually be doing this? Is this what I want to do with my life? And, and it actually is what I want to do with my life, by the way. It's like, my, it's what I was put on this earth to do. And at that time, I came really close to giving it up. And it humbled me, but it ultimately reignited my, my passion for building trading systems. And, and my game is 10x what it was a couple of years ago. And it's led to the incredible discoveries I'm going to share with you today. So it forced me to recognize that crypto asset markets in the middle of a mania bubble are fundamentally different from stock and currency markets. I didn't figure that out until late. Why? I wasn't prepared for decline to that magnitude in stock markets. The biggest thing you ever see is 50 or 60%. And I stopped trading in and out after about a 50 or 60% decline. And, and the coins I was trading were supposedly blue chip old coins, right? Like Ethereum is supposed to be the blue chip. It's like the second biggest. It's supposed to be the bluest of the blue chips. It went from 1400 down to 62. And a blue chip investment, that just does not behave this way. So I needed to work out why altcoins experienced an average 99% decline. It, was, it really was a 99% decline. Everybody get wrecked. And so I developed this, uh, the automated wealth creation engine. We don't have 100 years of data on crypto. It's a brand new thing. So... The danger is that you're building a curve-fitted system that doesn't work in the future. So what I wanted to, to do was minimize the risk. And so what I did to minimize the risk is I started with a, a really battle-tested set of system rules from a stock trading book. I pulled it from a hedge fund buddy. It's, um, it's like a complete hedge fund system. And, and then I started adapting it for crypto assets, which was, to me, it was the quick way to build a system. It was the low-risk way to, to build a system. Um, if I'm if I'm building a system based on principles that are undisputedly a money-making thing in other areas, it's probably going to work. So that was the best way for me to start. And what I didn't know when I just started designing this was that the testing would, would lead us in a really remarkable direction. And stuff that I didn't think was possible, from the information in, within the blockchain itself, I discovered how to predict the three most important aspects of successful crypto investing. And it's stuff that I didn't think was possible before. And first, we can get the exact precise date that the market ends because we know how people will be behaving at that bull market end. We know that the guys who've been holding for six or seven years will be selling their coins. And we know that the, that the guys who've never bought a Bitcoin in their life will be buying their coins frantically and the market will be behaving in a very specific volatility profile. And, and we know that People will be FOMOing into shit coins and more specifically, the very low quality shit coins will be, will be flying through the roof. We, know, we have a very, very precise picture of what the end looks like. We know the end of the story. But we don't know anything else. The second thing that we can figure out with really, really high degree of precision is when the bear market ends and when it's safe to invest again. So what we have here is crypto sucks because it goes down 99% in the bear markets. If you can avoid that, you get all the good without the bad. And the third thing, which was the real power behind this, is the times when altcoins outperform everything. And it's, it's what crypto traders call alt season. And it's where everything goes parabolic in a couple of months. It doesn't last forever. You, 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 you get three of them, sometimes four in a typical bull market. And so... Even though I simplified and streamlined system development using a, a very standard form of trading system from the hedge fund world, you'll see that our system has something no other trading system in any other market can do, which is to tell you to exit your positions at the absolute peak of the mania. And we can see the mania starting to form. We know the ending to this, uh, of the story. 
of what wasn't possible before was to just go, oh, wow, this is what a top is. Let's walk off. So if you know anything about trading, you've traded through the last crypto market, picking tops is something that's really hard to do. And, and it's something I usually don't even try and do because it's like hitting a hole in one in golf. But because of the information hidden in the blockchain, we can do that every time. We can reliably tell you when to stop trading, get your money out to cash, drop the mic, walk off a winner, just walk off like a boss. And even better, we can do it every single time. We cannot get the little wiggles along the way. I'm not that good. Sorry, I can't do it. Wish I could. Really, really wish I could. I can't. If I was trying to get every little wiggle up and down, eventually I'd miss one. And then if you miss one, you don't get the big one. What I try to do is I don't know what's going to happen here. I can catch that one. I can get the top. That's got to be good enough. I'm sorry if it's not good enough for you, but, it, but I can get that one thing. So we're talking about no false po positive signals, no hoping and praying that you've timed it right. And when you, you sell, you can be comfortable that the exact same time that Bitcoin's trading somewhere between two and 400K, all anyone's talking about is crypto. It's going to seem like it's going to go on forever. You're going to think what I felt in 2017 was like, oh, wow, it's like a permanent new high. Like, like we're just like, it's, it's like getting in on the ground floor of Google in like 2006. Wow, this is like, this is going to change everything. You know, like well, buying Facebook in 2011 or, or Apple when it started to move. It's like, it's going to feel like, oh, wow, this is a generational asset. This is something that you just don't want to sell. You'd be crazy to sell. And that's what it will feel like. So this is the best um, pricing model that I've seen. So it's called the top cap model. I, I, I won't explain it. We haven't got time. But it's by a blockchain site. It's called Willy Woo, who's got a fantastic website, by the way. And you can see that it's picked previous tops. And we're looking for a price target. He's got between three and 500K. Um, I think 250 and 300K is, is a bit more conservative. And when are we looking for that? We're looking for that. End of Q1, Q2, 2022. So we're looking at something in the range of 200 to 500K. And I know that's a big range. We just don't have any precision, but we're, we know what the ending of the story looks like. So you'll be the cool head in the crisis that tells them, no, don't buy your Bitcoins for 500K, please. Don't, Dad, don't sell the house and buy Bitcoins. I'm selling mine. You shouldn't play this game. You got in too late. You'll be that guy. So let's be clear. I didn't even think this was possible. And I thought that the only solution was to wait until the bull market ends, exit on a trailing stop, get back 30 to 50% of gains in altcoins, and then in the same time, Bitcoin had declined 40%. And so you're giving back 60% of what you made. I thought that was the only way. That wasn't really an option for crypto systems. So the, the search for a solution brought us to something far better, which is what I'm going to share with you today. So the short version of what I did is to modify a very proven type of trading system from hedge funds. And what it does is always keep your money constantly in the strongest performing crypto assets. And it rotates them to other coins when those coins become strong. So when a coin, it holds the coin, the five strongest coins, that's what it does. It's a very simple concept. So that your returns are many times higher than just buying a selection of altcoins and holding them. Because that's what most people do. They're like, oh, which coins you like? I like Uni, I like Sushi, I like Matic, I like, oh, I like this, I like that. Okay, let's buy five, let's buy 10, let's buy whatever. Got some bags, sit on. That's the normal way. And you can still use this system if you want to do your own research, but I've gotten far superior results. No confusion, no stress, no agitation, no worry that I'm getting it wrong, just by following a simple set of rules. And those rules always keep me invested in the highest performing coins. And the upside of this is that you don't need to spend endless hours doing research, relying on tips. You don't need to filter the good information from the bad. You don't need to know how blockchain works, which um, I do now, but I didn't when I started trading. Um, you don't need to understand anything technical. You don't need to believe that crypto is the future of money. You don't need to believe one of those stupid cheerleading teams for crypto. And it makes no difference at all if you think it's all a scam, as long as you like making money fast. And this is completely the opposite of what everyone in the crypto world will tell you to do. 
you know, the conventional wisdom, get on Reddit, get on Twitter, ask a bunch of your friends, and you're going to get 20 different recommendations and the same five or 10 names are going to keep popping up and you're going to go, oh, I'm going to buy some uni, I'm going to buy some sushi, I'm going to buy some Matic, I should have some Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and, and there should be a couple of other shit coins in there. And, and that's how most people do it. And they buy them in random amounts at random times and they hope. And hope is a mistake. It's a poor, poor investment strategy. So or you're going to do your own research and, and research is really pain in the ass because as soon as you start researching, you fall in love with the things that you research and you're going to believe that some random shit coin is the next big coin. It's going to hundred X, but every coin makes that same claim, every coin. And everyone's going to tell you to just hold on for dear life, hold on, and then one day you're just going to be rich and, and it works for Bitcoin. And this is the problem. It's always worked for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a horror movie that works out in the end, but it hasn't worked at all for altcoins. So the most common strategy by far, and it's not too bad, is pick five or 10 coins with stories that make sense and chart formations that are pretty decent. Cross your fingers and hold. And that works really, really well about 10% of the time. The rest of the time, it sucks. And we're going to dive deep on the data, and I'll prove to you that I'll show you a better way that returns far bigger and more importantly, far more consistent profits. And if you're doing that now, I'm not telling you that you're wrong or even that you should stop. I'm just saying there's a better way. And if you still want to do it the standard way, I can help you time a perfect exit to maximize your profits too. I can show you a way that takes luck completely out of the equation, makes absolutely certain you hold the winning coins, but only in the periods where they actually skyrocket. So I think everyone, would say that polka dot is on people's like I think it's a cool coin list. Um, our system first selected on 8th of January this year and it did nothing for a long time. And then it 10x in a couple of months and now it did nothing and it's back somewhere down here. This is the normal thing. Coin does nothing and then boom it moons. And by the time people notice that it's moving, they, they jump in and then everyone's got a bag and it stops going up. Why does it stop going up? Because everyone's already got a bag. Would you have held through this or would you have given up and, and switched out to the hot whatever thing was working? Even if you did hold through that, what you missed is the opportunity cost. Because while Polkadot was doing nothing, Bitcoin went up 400%. And we all know that's true. Like. Most of the time, Bitcoin is better than altcoins. But when altcoins work, holy fuck do they work. You can get the best of both worlds. You can hold Bitcoin while it's going up. You can switch out into Polkadot at the exact perfect time, hold it for just a couple of months that it's doing stupid stuff, and then switch out into the next thing. It's not a one-off. We can, we have already repeated this with just about any popular coin you want to name dozens of times this year. We always hold the, co the hot coins. So when a coin starts going up, for example, this red line is Luna, you can see we got a very early signal on Luna. We got all of these coins that are going up through the roof, Matic, Luna, VeChain, Ada, Polkadot. We got very early signals on that they were outperforming way back here. These were the leaders way back here and they later went ballistic. You get a clue. So when alts are doing nothing, like they did nothing for, for July, August, September, October, November, December, six months they did nothing. We were holding Bitcoin or Ethereum and Bitcoin and Ethereum was going up like 260 something percent at that time. And then finally when it happens, we started trading alts December 26 last year. So right here. So when Bitcoin is performing altcoins, it's outperforming. We're safely clocking really significant profits simply by holding Bitcoin. It's very simple, nothing to do, just holding Bitcoins. And we only switched out into altcoins at the perfect time. And when the market corrects, we switch back to Bitcoin or Ethereum for safety. Because the last thing you want to do is by flipping in, is be flipping in and out massively trading altcoins while the market's going down. It's a disaster. So we don't do it. And I'm going to show you how we do it. And I've been obsessed. I mean, really, really obsessed with designing trading systems for the last 10 years. 
I, I put my heart and soul into trading everything I had, all my savings, my reputation. I had no success at all until I started trading systematically. So at some point, the logical thing for me to do was to learn everything about there was about designing trading systems from the best in the world. And 10 years into full-time system trading, I'm pretty proud of the community we've created. And most people in the trading industry are just completely full of shit. And it thrills me, it really does, to actually be showing people how professionals really trade. And professional trading is a lot simpler than most people think it is. And it actually thrills me to be completely transparent in the long-term sharing of my results, good and bad. I've had some terrible results the last two months of my every one of thousand of my thousands of trades. And I'm going to show you the simplest, most profitable automatic wealth creation engine that you could possibly imagine. It's really, really cool. It's the best system I've ever designed. It takes just 10 minutes a week to do. Do not check or touch it during the week. That's the hardest part. It stays completely in cash through bear markets. So it does not trade any of these sections in the boxes. You're just sitting in cash these whole times. It just removes all of the worst experience of cryptocurrency trading. You just don't have to experience. And after a bear market, you only buy back in, you bought back here, you bought back here, you bought back here. You're not buying at the lows, you're buying a bit off the lows. So, so you're giving, so, so you, you're waiting until it's safe to buy. And it's important to understand that our system doesn't hold altcoins all the time. During the recent downturn, you, you're better off holding, you're better off in Ethereum or Bitcoin. And our system held Ethereum and then it held, held Bitcoin first and then Ethereum, uh, rather than continually switching between altcoins, which would have been a disaster. And I don't use opinions, I don't use fundamentals, I don't use technical analysis to select anything. Um, we use straight statistics and we use proven mathematics from battle-tested hedge fund systems, which I'm going to walk you through in a little bit. And uh, there's a guy who got the 2014 Nobel Prize for Finance, Eugene Farmer, and he was the guy who discovered the efficient markets hypothesis. He called this edge the premier market, the premier anomaly in finance. And this is probably the, in the last 20 years, this has been the most studied phenomenon in, in the financial literature banner. It, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of peer-reviewed papers. Everyone agrees that it's a real thing. No one understands why it's a real thing. So let's look at some examples. You can see that our system bought alpha on 23rd December last year. And you can see that alpha is the blue line. As soon as it started outperforming Bitcoin, it continued to outperform. And that's the way it works. Early outperformance is a statistical signal that we're expecting outperformance going on. That what's incredible is that it selected it just two days before it started this incredible run. So you would have held Bitcoin while it rose from 49.50 to 23,000, then switched it all into alpha, including your profits while it made its moonshot. And so this is the performance in 2021, and I want to discuss the crash performance because that's the most relevant thing for today. So, yeah, of course, while the crypto market is going crazy, you know, it outperformed at its peak, turned one Bitcoin into 800, eight some point something Bitcoin or nine Bitcoin or whatever. Um, how much did it lose? About 30% in Bitcoin terms. So it's 8.4 to 6.2 Bitcoin now, I think. Um, so I'm reasonably happy with this performance in the crash. I know it wasn't fun, but where are we in Bitcoin terms? We're the same as we were about a, a month before the crash. It's not so bad. And I want you to remember that the whole goal of the system is to increase your stack of Bitcoins. It's nothing else other than increasing the stack of Bitcoins. A coin selection algorithm keeps you in the strongest performing investments whatever the market phase, and it's intentionally making the decisions to maximize the amount of Bitcoin, not the amount of cash you have. And why did I do it that way? Why didn't I just start going, running to tethers for safety or cashing some out along the way? Because we don't know anything but the end of the story. And we know that one day, probably in quarter two, 2022, Bitcoin will reach some number that feels like 
insane to say out loud. Like 300,000, 500,000, like, like some number that like, you feel like an idiot just for saying. But it's done this stuff many times before. Like when Bitcoin was at a hundred bucks, who would have predicted it was going to go to 20 grand? It just does it over and over again. So we're preparing for that day. A coin selection algorithm keeps you in the strongest performing investments, whatever the market's doing. And when it's best to hold Bitcoin, you hold Bitcoin. When it's best to hold altcoins, you hold the five strongest altcoins. And we'll talk about that now. And as soon as you see a market top, it switches you back to cash and you walk off. You stop trading. We know that crypto bear markets last at least a year, usually longer. Um, the system switches off, you go to cash and you just walk away and start spending. You don't experience any of that pain. No time-sucking obsession, no Reddit, no Facebook groups, no reading the news, no Googling at all. You only check it once a week. We don't even have a Facebook group with it for it because I don't want one. I don't want a new job checking notifications. I just want, it's not like the other ways of trading which turn into the stressful and time-consuming second job. Unlike my other systems, there's zero, I mean, zero learning curve. No rules to memorize, no videos to watch. It's as close to a fully automated wealth creation solution as I could get without having security problems. So who is it for? It's for those who don't have a crypto portfolio. They're worried they might end up riding the boom all the way to the top and back down to the bottom. It's for those who already have a crypto portfolio and they're worried about timing their exit. And it's for those who haven't got in yet, and I'm hoping there's a couple of you, but are fearful of not selling at the right time. And people are worried that it might be them who is the sucker buying the top and left holding the bag. So this is a Google Trends search, trends.google.com. I just did a search worldwide for Bitcoin over the last five years. You can see that fewer people are searching the term Bitcoin than they did in 2017. How is that possible? Like the only way that it's, that it's possible, that's not a top. You know, at a top for Bitcoin, people should be Googling it by crazy. Your grandma should be calling you asking, should I, should I buy some Bitcoins? Like everyone should be getting those calls. And though it got pretty crazy, it didn't get 2017 crazy. So the system uses advanced data mining in the blockchain to trade only during the bull market phases. And cryptocurrency bull markets are orders of magnitude stronger than regular bull markets. And we can take full advantage of that because it's, it's a real difference. So during the brutal bear market the system has a safely in cash within a week of every single market top. So the 213 top exit was in that little dip between those two things. And uh, personally, I'd actually look down on cryptocurrency traders right until the end. So uh, I had 10 Bitcoins from back in the day that I'd bought and forgotten about. And, and I was kind of pleased when it started to go up, but it wasn't a big amount of my portfolio. And, and I thought I was a real pro trader. I trade real markets, not these like weird nerd hobby markets. And I have these two great mates and they're complete crypto, crypto maniacs. And they were always asking me for opinions about charts. And one of these guys bought a yacht Another guy bought a beachfront mansion and, and I got interested right at the end. And I bought five Bitcoins off my buddy Lawrence for around 15,000 each. I started trading them in and out of every, uh, of altcoins every day. And I turned my five Bitcoins into 12.4 Bitcoins, pulled out my five Bitcoins and put them on a Trezor stick, which is sitting right in my cupboard over there still. And in my mind, I thought I was safe because I, I got my money back. And I was reading the charts and just doing discretionary trading and I was playing and winning and I had 20, 20 out of 23 winning trades and I felt like it was so easy. What the hell was I doing trading futures and stocks with these 55% win rates? When crypto was running at 90%, I'd made more money off two months off a small account than I did all the last year off my big accounts. And I remember the exact moment that I'm thinking, wow, I should stop trading futures and just do this. And that was the exact top. That was January 2018, about uh, January 14th. And so I had eight consecutive losing trades in a week after none for a couple of weeks. My account was down 25% in Bitcoin terms, but Bitcoin had gone down from 20K to 10K. All of a sudden, I was just down 62% in two weeks. How the fuck do you have a 62% two-week drawdown? How the fuck did this happen to me? 
And it was coming off the back of a few years of really extraordinary performance where I'd taken my accounts from a small account to a couple of million and, and I was arrogant and it kind of felt like all I was doing was winning. And, and then I get totally fucked and it was all my own fault and it was through my own arrogance and greed and it broke the spell and it just made me realize this is a serious fucking game. No matter how long you've been doing it, there's sharks in these woods and everyone's trying to fuck you. And I was expecting a 70% decline to in a bear market. And I was down 60%. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just stop actively trading. I'll leave the money in the coins I actively liked and hold along like everyone else. And that seemed to be what everyone else was doing. And the coins that I really believed in were Ethereum, Icon, OMG, NEO, and TRX. And they kept fucking going down. Not for months, for years and years and years. Shit, they get coins. And the exact opposite of what happened in the bull market where the rising tide floated every boat. In a bear market, everything lost and everything kept losing. And, and for years. And the five Bitcoins I got out for safety didn't do any better. They went down 82%. And the thing that literally every crypto trader on you did, do your own research and hold on for dear life, didn't work at all for anyone in 2017. And why is that? Because the coins that looked the best in the last bull market were terrible now. So let's look at a couple of them. So ZRX was one of the most promising, best light coins in 2017. Still below its all-time highs in 2017. In a month, it went from 16 cents to $2.32. It went 14x in a month and then wiped it all out. Still hasn't recovered. So if you held one of these it fucking turns, all the way through, it's a double whammy. So you haven't got your money back five years later. But in the meantime, Polkadot, Matic, any DeFi coin randomly off list, Chainlink, Uni, Sushi, anything you can think of, any random coin, poo coin, shit coin, they've all 10x or 100x, and you have none of those games because your money's tied up in one of these underperforming legacy shit coins that just tie up your capital for five fucking years. And you're still waiting to get your original investment back because you suck. And imagine being in crypto since 2017 and still not making any money. These coins will never outperform the newer coins simply because of human nature. There's a certain amount of selling pressure when price recovers to where people bought because people want to hold until they get their money back. The hot coins from the last bull market always underperform the next one. Very important, critical to understand. And that's going to happen to you too unless you smart the fuck up and embrace a better way. And it's not unique to crypto. It's observable in every stock bull market for the last 100 years. The hot stocks in 2000 weren't hot in 2007. The market leaders in 2000 and 2007 underperformed the current bull market. We see this in crypto now. The popular cryptos that everyone loves, the polka dots, the Maddox, the Terrors, the Lunas, the Chainlink, that wasn't a blip on the radar in 2017, exactly like Facebook, Netflix, and Tesla weren't the hot tech stocks of the 2000 bubble. So that standard advice to just hold along, that works great for Bitcoin, but it's terrible for alts. And this adoption of the just hold on mantra, it's fucking idiotic and it's been the cause of endless suffering. It's been the cause of huge losses. And it's what we have the technology to avoid. So here I was having torn up a pile of money and become the exact idiot that I'm always making fun of in my email list, some expert, hey? And it really made me feel like a fraud, a fake ass pretend guru who's teaching people to trade while he loses money himself. And I felt like a right twat because I actually was a right twat. You know, I had this first mentor, Al, and uh, he told me that if you didn't make money, Scott, it's because, probably because you're not good enough. Good advice. And I nearly gave up selling my trading systems. I stopped emailing my list for a while. It was a really dark time for me. It bled over into other areas of my life too. My marriage suffered. I got fat again. I'm still fat. Um, I felt like a loser. It was hard to snap out of. And I, and I remember Al told me, this, if you didn't make money, it's probably because you aren't good enough. And, you know, that beautiful advice, I just wasn't good enough. The stuff that worked in real markets didn't work at all in crypto. I got caught up in the madness of the crowd like a day one newbie, and it was my 10th year of full-time trading. So I started a pretty serious soul-searching effort trying to get, first of all, some clarity around what had gone wrong and how I could use this defeat to power a future victory. And like many times in my life, close to defeat, I rose to my feet. And I became really determined, seriously determined to master these new markets. Um, this is a spot in the trading system ecosystem system where I can be early and I can be the best in the world. And no one else is claiming this, this territory and I'm claiming it all for myself. 
and I can redeem myself. I can make a shit ton of money for everyone in the process. And obviously what first came to mind is the way that I was trading, which is finding coins that I like, a good story. That's the exact opposite of what I tell people to do. And it's something that I suck at. So it was pretty clear that when the market's going crazy right at the top, I was going to be as caught up in it as anyone else. And I'm probably going to turn into an idiot like everyone else does when they're making a pile of money. We all turn into idiots. I needed a system, obviously. And the question was, what type of system? And one type of system really stood out for, from all the others. And that's momentum systems. And I'd previously been paid to design a system, a momentum system for a stock trader. The results are amazing. They outperformed everything in a bull market. And, and more importantly, the rules of the system made it sit out bear markets in cash. And so you can see in these flat spots, that was 2008, it sits in cash. And this thing did 2,006% for these guys. The red line is the S&P. It just, it's continued to perform really well. It's in the system world masterclass I built, which many of you own, great system, but a simple system. And seeing I was designing a system specifically to take advantage of a potentially historical market was the obvious choice. And since I was tweaking a standard thing, there was very little risk that it wasn't going to work. It gave me the confidence to start real money trading far earlier than I would normally do and get the real world data to optimize this. So the standard strategy that everyone tells you invest with is fatally flawed. This idea that you're going to go on YouTube, you're going to follow a bunch of traders who don't sound like they're full of shit, you're going to go on Reddit, you're going to ask your Facebook friends which coins to buy, and then you're going to buy some, you're going to have a bag, and you're just going to hold on for dear life. This is going to send you broke. The real cause of the problem is that hold on for dear life, it works great with Bitcoin and terribly with altcoins. The idea that you buy and you never sell and you hold through bear markets and everything's going to work out in the end like a horror movie with a happy ending, it works for Bitcoin. It really does. Bitcoin, and there's reasons why it's going to always work for Bitcoin, but it doesn't work for altcoins. So let's test it for ourselves. So OMG, one of the coins that I held, would have lost money holding from ICO. TRX, below the 2017. Neo had a great run, still way below the 2017 ones. Even the blue chip altcoins right now trading far below what you could have bought them for 2017. So if that's just you holding on like they tell you to, you've just endured a bear market that wiped out 95% of your gains. Then to add insult to injury, your coins have gone up, but gone up slower than the popular coins of today. Everyone congratulates you on being big time crypto guy, but but really you're crying inside because you're only just making back part of the losses that you've been getting butt slammed with over the last five brutal years. So does anyone think that holding your altcoins through a bear market is a good idea? There's one thing for today that I want you to take away. It's that holding altcoins through a bear market sucks. And you might be expecting some kind of technical analysis considering that I'm known for that, the system doesn't use any TA at all, just solid maths. And another problem that you have to face is that you have to wade through a literal mountain of disinformation and bullshit opinions from people who don't know anything to find out what are the good ones. And you're expected to brag about your choices as though it's a football team, which leads you to falling in love with your investment, which leads you not wanting to sell at the right time. And I'm going to show you a better way. So there's many, many highly successful multi-billion dollar hedge funds and ETFs called momentum funds. They don't rely on opinions at all, just pure statistics. You can see if I just search for momentum, there's just there's a ton of them. And as well as 300 billion with a B of hedge fund money, about the same for investment banks. Um, there's about 30 exchange traded momentum ETFs. And you can see that in a bull market, they always outperform the stock market. That's what they do. Momentum outperforms. Beating the stock market with a momentum system isn't just easy, it's trivial. And it's easier, even easier to beat the crypto market using the same strategy because crypto is so tribal, it's so opinion-based. And most importantly, it beat the rest of the market on the way up and it lost less money than the, than the broader market during the downturn. So this is the growth of one Bitcoin in 2021, Bitcoin. So you can see pretty significant pullback but really normal. There's this incredible body of academic research, probably the most journal topic in the last 20 years in finance, proving that not only is it real, but it makes logical sense. 
and the momentum effect is based on human nature. And the human nature that it's based on is that everyone loves a winner. The coin that starts to win, it goes up fast. You love it. You don't sell it because it's going up and you love it. You tell your friends about it and they buy it too. And it starts to go on most gainer, biggest gainer lists. And then everyone starts to buy it because it's going up. And then it's like, how about them Bitcoins? How about that poker? Wow, you got to go. And it's a positive feedback loop. It's just human nature. It's human nature that I've experienced that, that I've been part of and that will never change. So let's be really clear about the real problem crypto traders face. In bear markets, everything's fucked. The highest quality assets are going 90%. And this might be okay if you put a few thousand dollars in for a laugh, but it's not suitable for serious investors. You cannot invest millions of dollars that way. It's insane. And the solution is to only trade during bull markets, like now. And let's face it, with the market the way it was a few months ago, it was easy to make money, no matter what you did. And just getting on YouTube and researching a few coins wasn't too bad while the going was good. Altcoin holders got taken to the cleaners the last few months while we avoided the worst of the pain. Actually, we didn't avoid the worst of the pain. We got, we got our fair share of pain and then some, everyone did. But now let me show you how we can avoid trading in bear markets and cash right out of the tippy top of the eventual peak. And when I figured this out, I knew we were going to make a lot of money. So every transaction has a date of time. So unlike Every other market, I can work out what you when you bought your bitcoins and deduce what you paid for, and then I know how much profit you have. And I know that if you bought Bitcoin in 2015 for a thousand bucks, it's 50 grand today with 98 percent profit. And I know when you have that unbanked profit, it becomes very stressful. It becomes a very big deal for you. The higher the market goes, the more tempting it is to sell, start selling, and cash out some of those paper profits. So what happens is. As soon as the market starts to go down beyond a threshold, everyone gets scared that, oh no, it's happening again, the crash is happening again, and, and people rush to sell out. So what we're waiting for is an extreme of paper profits, and then the market's starting to go down and that avalanche starting, as soon as it starts, we're just, the first pebbles on the avalanche happen and we're out. We know it's not possible to get to 100% paper profits. We have a threshold. So when we do this, some data mining, we can see the exact point where all the other bull markets are form apart under the weight of their Titanic bullshit. Turns out unbanked profits get to 75% and then fall. This is the first pebble in the avalanche. You can see this pebble in 2017 happened like two days after the top. And that's the end. And that was also the end every single time. And what's really interesting is that a universal constant in any market is that people are greedy at market tops and fearful at market bottoms. You shouldn't take my word for it. Did any of you buy Bitcoin when it was $3,000 in the bear? I didn't, it was way too scary. Did any of you sell your Bitcoins at 19,500 or at 64 in the last bull market? Anyone sell their Bitcoins for, for above 60,000? I didn't. I was way too greedy and I couldn't have been more optimistic than at the absolute top in 2017 or the recent top in May. And you know, if you were that good, please brag about it in the chat, but, I don't think anyone that good. She buy stocks in 2008, the worst part of the GFC, which was the best buying opportunity in 100 years. Or buy stocks in the Corona crash last February, best buying opportunity in years. Who would have thought it? Has there ever been a true bull market that didn't end up with everyone insane with greed? Real estate, dot com bubble, silver, Bitcoin, any market, anywhere. Anyone think of one? And we can read stories going back hundreds of years and in the tulip bubble, people were absolutely convinced that a single flower was worth more than a house. And has there ever been a bear market that didn't end up in fear and pessimism? So extremes of fear happen at the end of, of, of bear phases and at the end of bear markets. And the price action in the last couple of weeks, there was a significant amount of fear. That's the end. I bet you hated real estate in 08. I bet you hated stocks in 09. I bet you didn't buy more Bitcoins at 3,000. No, I didn't. And I bet the idea of buying crypto two weeks ago was horrific. Doesn't matter how smart you are or how much you know, it's just emotionally very difficult to buy when everyone else is panicking and, and, and sell when everyone else is buying for it. So if we can figure out how to objectively measure the greed and fear of investors, could you use that to time market tops and bottoms with frightening accuracy? 
And so what I did here is I found this old academic paper by one of the original Bitcoin guys turned to master. And he suggested a way of measuring Bitcoin sentiment was by answering the hypothetical question. If all Bitcoin holders sold out today, how much money would be made or lost total? And this just picks every fucking top, every fucking time. It's ridiculous. We divide that number by the market capitalization of Bitcoin. We get one number to rule them all that stays constant across the markets. We get the green index. And the green index, there's more to it, but it's the foundation of everything we do, we're going to do today. So the only makes logical sense has worked perfectly for 10 straight years. It's caught both every single top and every single market bottom. Every time, top, bottom, top, top, bottom, top, bottom. This one wasn't a top. And you can see, didn't pick this as a top. And it's still going. It's revolutionary and game changing. You don't have to sit through 90% of the cards. Switch out to cash when the greed index tops. You get back into Bitcoins when the greed index goes below negative and then turns positive, indicating the bear market's over. You don't need to know any of this, by the way. You just have to read the weekly alerts. They happen on Monday. And in this way, we've solved the major problem that crypto investors have faced. That the big swings up and down mean that for serious investors, the ride is too wild. That you can't bet your retirement money on something that's a roller coaster. But now that you know with ironclad certainty that you're going to sit out bear markets in cash, this once risky investment becomes perfectly safe. And this isn't some fancy bit of curve-fitted statistics manipulation that fails in the real world. And here's why. We absolutely know that these bull markets only, only, only end when all the buyers are bought. They don't end just because they're overvalued. And they end when there's no more greater fools to buy to drive the price up. When everyone's going to fall back, that's when it's over. And now with the greed index, we finally have the tool to objectively measure exactly when buyers are all in. And this is based on fundamental of markets and human nature. And in the 10-year life of Bitcoin, it's never failed to. And, and let's not gloss over it before we start um, diving deep on momentum systems and I explain how it works in practical sense. Let's look at a few market tops and see how it works. So you probably don't remember, but in 2014, Bitcoin had an early bubble where it spiked over a thousand bucks for the first time. That was a high that stood for five years, not five years, but years. Our system switched off December 6, 2013 at 1,035 Bitcoin, just six days before the peak, which is 1,100. And then it's brought back all the way down here. Sell everything, go to cash, buy back in, boom. Stood aside from the bear market, bought back into Bitcoin for 265, rode that to 19,600. Then in again in 2017, Green Index maxed out December 19, 2017, when Bitcoin was at 18,940. Kept us out until April 2, 2019, when it bought back in for 4,900. Sell everything, buy back. Remarkable. And I hope you can see how this is having x ray vision on the moment. And we've never been able to get such an accurate picture before. For the first time ever, you can benefit from the proven exponential potential of crypto markets without suffering through just the terrible, terrible bear markets. And now that you understand how we only invest in. in while we're actually in a bull market, we'd like to dive deep on momentum. I'm going to show you, show you the rules. I'm going to show you how we put everything together in a simple set of automated rules. It works, momentum systems work with a three-step process. So step one is check your trend filter. You only buy coins when you're in a bull market. So you don't trade any of those bear market periods at all. You sit in cash. And so it might not be obvious, but the real effect of that is that your equity curve looks like this now, just a flat and then, and then back up. So you just wait out the winter, go do something else, and then you're back to earning. And, and I'd be lying if I told you that investing in cryptos is going to be all blowjobs and chocolate. You're going to have huge drawdowns. But with this method, you never get to experience any of the soul-sucking terror of watching your net wealth decline day after day for years. You will have shitty weeks and shitty months. You will. You won't have shitty years. And it's that simple. You never be the guy at Christmas dinner who's telling his family to put all their money into Bitcoin when it was 20000 looks like an idiot which actually happened to several of my friends. And the step two is you rank your coins according to statistical strength. And you hold only the strongest performing coins. We're holding five, there's a reason for that. So step three, once a week on a Monday, 
Monday is not important, but, uh, uh, but we do it on Monday. You check the ranking list of coins again. Anything that's not in your strongest coins list, you sell and you replace it with a new coin from your list. Buying the strongest coins until you run out of money. It's super simple. And let's look at coin ranking in detail. And we need a way of ranking coins that's not opinion or technical analysis or anything where your ideas are different than mine. So we stole the way that they use it for stock traders. They use the slope of a 90 day linear regression line, which is a statistical mathematical thing, not a technical analysis thing. So this is a line of best fit over the last 49 days. You can see here, the slope of Polkadot is nearly flat. And FTT, which was the strongest coin in that time, was steeper, a steeper slope is stronger. So we just take all the coin list, steeper slope is the strongest coin by the five strongest. That's what we do. The race isn't always to the swift, the battle isn't always to the strong, but that's definitely the way to bet. And that is the opposite of trying to research and predict the future about which coin has the best idea or the best technology. So it's a simple statement of fact. So this week, these are the five strongest coins. It's not predicting the future. It's just saying that they might not be the strongest next week, but the odds are they'll all do pretty well. So we aren't going for perfection here. I'm not trying to predict that a 20 cent coin is going to $50. I can't do that. But I can predict with a reasonable degree of accuracy that a coin which has been the strongest for the past seven weeks will probably continue to do pretty well at least because it's an observation we can test and we actually know that's true. Not only can we test and show that it holds true, it holds equally true across every exchange from Coinance, Binance, Kraken, Bittrex, CoinSpot, KuCoin, it doesn't matter which data set we plug into, it's the same edge. It gives us an objective measure that doesn't rely on like, I like this coin, I hate that coin. And that saves you endless confusion. You don't have to do heaps of research. If you, you don't lie awake at night worrying if you've got it wrong, when a crypto starts going up faster than the others, it is statistically likely to continue to move up faster in the future. We brag about it to our friends. Social media attracts more buyers and drives the price up further and people love it and they stop selling it. Attracts more buyers, positive feedback. And we are not logical when it comes to investment. We keep the things we love, we sell the things we hate. And anything that's making you a lot of money becomes an investment in love and people sell less of it, which means the price goes up faster. This has been observable in stocks for several hundred years now. It's the basis for 300 billion with a B dollars in investments in the stock market. And I've got a quote here from my buddy Andreas, whose system I stole. Um, what makes the momentum effect comfortable to rely on is not only that it has worked very well in the past, but also that it makes logical sense. It's a phenomenon in the market which is not likely to go away because it's part of basic human nature. Everybody loves a winner. When I started developing the system, what I did is I had a program spit out the results from different ranking methodologies, and I tested a bunch of different ones. Um, so I tested 120 days, 90 days, excluding the most recent 30, 60 days, excluding the most recent 20, 45, excluding the most recent 15, um, turned out to be the winner. And I manually imported that data into spreadsheets and sorted it. I started testing and what I saw was what I expected was that a crypto was faster than stocks. In the first three months I was trading this, I used ranking 45 days, excluding 15 days. Eventually final optimization squeezed a bit more performance out of it using 49 days, excluding 14 days, which made logical sense because it's a seven day market. And the results are incredible. I turned a $70,000 initial investment into just under a million dollars. I pulled out 495,000, thank fuck for that. Pulled it out too early. I pulled this out on March 21, but the account kept growing. Um, this was close to its peak um, at, at 13 Bitcoin in a single day. It was doing like 129 grand at, at, at the peak of the madness. It had had two drawdown weeks in 13 and I was incredibly excited and, and I took the winning parameters into our, slim, into our simulator. I was expecting a slam dunk and I was waiting, just waiting for proper back tests to be done. And when I finally got all the data, it actually didn't work that well. It had these amazing periods where it would five or 10 X and then would lose value in terms of Bitcoin, but it would make money since Bitcoin was going up. Um, and at first I was actually gutted and then I dug a bit more into it. And for the periods where it was performing well, it was a period where Bitcoin was crushing anyway. So the solution sort of was very obvious there was that these periods where you're making 2000 or 5,000% per year and then you're giving a lot back. But when I researched those periods, it wasn't like crypto was losing money. It was just better to hold Bitcoin or Ethereum. 
So these red boxes are periods where holding altcoins is optimal. You see in the past five years, we've got five of them. So everyone know what alt season is? And alt season looks like this. 98% of the time it's fucked, 98% of the time. Alt season is wonderful. So it turns out I modified the greed index by doing the same data mining to, to on altcoin blockchains. And I can identify these times when altcoins are going to outperform Bitcoin. And so this was the missing bit. There's multiplied system profitability by 10x and here's how it works. So I just asked myself, why can't I do the greed index with altcoins? And not only does it work, it works really well. And the long-term greed index in Bitcoin tells us when the bigger bull market cycle is beginning and ending. But we need some more granularity for trading altcoins. I don't need to go, I need to know will altcoins go up this week and this week only. So obviously, if we know that, then invest, investing in the strongest altcoins is a literal slam dunk. So the, the proper thing to measure isn't really the greed index for Bitcoin in terms of the whole cycle, but really the short-term zigs and zags of the altcoin market, which is similar, it's related, but ultimately it's not quite the same. So what I did is pretty slick. We recreated the green index using the altcoin data, and we did some number crunching to only take into account the short-term traders. So strictly speaking, we are calculating an altcoin greed index only for coins that have been bought within the last 155 days. That's what it is. If you want to recreate your own thing, in this way, we can measure the sweet spot where altcoin traders start feeling rich. That's how it works. Bitcoin is a great gateway drug. People buy some Ethereum. Their Ethereum goes up. Oh, wow. I should buy some. How about them altcoins? I should buy some more. That's how it works. So let's have a look at how well this has worked in, in the past. You can see alt season from 25th of December. Now, to illustrate this, I've got a good selection of all the major cryptos. I've got a bunch of them. Um, and we only switch out of Bitcoin, Ethereum into altcoins when the short-term trader, altcoin greed index hits a certain limit. So altcoins, alt season started here and this period of time we started trading altcoins, actually held Doge through this, which was pretty sick. So let's dive a little deeper. That red line, that's the strongest performing altcoin, that was Doge. No one seriously could have picked that, right? Like, like, how could you? It's a joke coin. Like, who could have thought that it was just impossible? So our system bought it 27th of January. If you tell me you would have bought Doge in January last year, I'm calling bullshit on that. Back in January 27th. And you can see why it bought Doge. This is when altcoin alt season switched on. And you can see if we zoom in, the red line is Doge. You can see Doge was really outperforming all these other coins. Even before anyone really realized that we're in a crypto bull market, Doge is like doing its thing. So what we do is we, we pay attention to this. You can see the exact moment when altcoins wake up after a year of doing nothing. And you can see the red line is already pulling ahead of its peers. That's why the algorithm selected, not because it likes Doge or whatever. The other standout line on that chart is Luna, which we also bought the week earlier. So we're buying the strongest coins. This method of coin selection, when you don't worry about which is the best one, which one do you like, which team are you on, aside from being simpler and easier, it takes less time, less madness. Let's look at a longer term chart. So all coins are a very frustrating investment for, for a year. And then they went bullshit crazy. During the performance of that sideways period, Bitcoin and Ethereum were up over 260% in that same time. So what makes logical and financial sense is to hold Bitcoin and Ethereum using that same ranking methodology. Is Bitcoin stronger than altcoins? Oh, let's hold Bitcoin. Is Ethereum stronger than altcoins? Let's hold Ethereum. Is our altcoin stronger than Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, let's hold altcoins. And we only hold altcoins in the actual alt season. It's such a game changer because you're only holding in the very strong, you're only holding the highest beta assets in the very strongest period. So instead of rare pockets of incredible performance, you get smooth and consistent performance right throughout the bull market. And the peace of mind that you get from knowing you'll go to cash right at the peak 
And this is the absolutely definitive optimal strategy for investing in cryptocurrencies. So 10,000 turned into 83,000 this year, even after the crash. I mean, admittedly, that's a pretty hell of a drawdown. That was a, that was a serious, serious drawdown, 84K actually. So when the system works well, it's just breathtaking to behold. The, this was the best week we had. It was in early May. We had a 63.1% cash return in a single week, 58% against Bitcoin, 63%. And look at these terrible shit coins that it's holding. So I'd like to introduce you to the automated wealth creation engine. It's a exactly what it sounds like. It's a simple to use wealth creation engine that is designed to maximize profit from a bull market. Cashes you out right at the peak at the very top within a few days. And I'll guarantee that. It takes five minutes a week maximum. Um, I just timed myself this week, took me two minutes, 37 seconds, and you do not check it during the week, which is hard. There's no rules to learn. You can trade it very perfectly on your first day. You don't need to know how the blockchain works. You don't need to know, know anything about all things. Works on the biggest crypto exchanges, including the US only ones, the Australian ones, the EU ones, the DeFi ones, if you want to do it on Uniswap, Coinbase, Binance, Binance US, Kraken, Bittrex, KuCoin, CoinSpot, Independent Reserve. You only need an account with one of them. I personally use Binance. It's no better or worse than the others. And here's how it works. On Monday, you get the alerts. All happens on Monday, 00.00 GMT. Um, uh, and it doesn't matter what time, like as long as you're reasonably consistent. You enter your currency in your account size. The system tells you which coins to hold. So this week it was like hold mana, KSM, DOT, ADA, XMR. And that's it. When it's, in, when it's best to hold Bitcoin, it'll tell you to just hold Bitcoin. When it's best to hold Ethereum, you hold Ethereum. And when it's alt season, you hold the five strongest alt coins. Just the five strongest. And it's always five. There's, there's good reasons for that. It could not be simpler. Anyone can do that. And I didn't want a situation where I just created another new job for myself. And, and I'm a busy man now. And, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to take my eye off my forex scalping business. That would be disastrous. And let's So the last thing I need is a new high pressure, high stakes job trading crypto where I have to check things all day. Like it's just not what I'm out. I don't want to spend hours updating spreadsheets, analyzing trades. My, my old man, who's, a, who's like a the boomerist boomer you've ever seen, he's going to trade this system. So it needed to be simple. It's an automated done for you implementation of everything I've talked about today. You don't need to know about the technical stuff. You don't need to know about individual coins. You don't need to know about blockchain. You don't need to know about markets. You don't need to know about anything. Any of that shit that I know you don't need. And every week it keeps track of how much money you made in Bitcoin and your currency of choice. And all the profit graphs are taken care of so you don't need to update spreadsheets. And best of all, one day you're going to get an alert message from me. Might be nine months, might be two years. One day I'm going to get to the computer and tell you to sell it all. And on that day, my responsibility doesn't end with the system just sending out an email. I'll be picking up the phone and calling you to make absolutely sure you don't fuck this up. And I'm sure you can imagine by then it's going to be a roller coaster ride. Probably. It's going to swing up and down crazy numbers, like crazy, crazy millions of dollars up and down at a time. And when that aid comes, you will not want to sell. And I'm going to talk you down from that ledge. I'm going to stop you rolling the dice one more time. And I'm going to make sure that you walk away at the same time I do. We're going to cash out. We're going to cash out with a life changing win. That's what we're going to do. Nothing's going to stop us. We're going to drop the mic. This is a legendary thing. Turn a small amount of money into a multi-million dollar fortune in one year. It's a fuck off thing. It's an amazing thing. I'm doing it. I've actually already done it. I'm going to do it again five times as bad in the next six months. And I want you there with me. This is my time for greatness. Nothing's going to stand in the way of me achieving my dreams. This is me standing up and saying that I can't call myself a world-class trader until I do this, if I don't do this. My whole trading career, I've dreamed of doing this. I am a great trader and this is my time. And make no mistake, this is a one in a hundred year bull market. This is like one of those ones that'll go like the next page after the South Sea bubble and the Tulip bubble and the dot-com bubbles. This is a mania. We can ride this fucker to the moon. Fucking Lambo's right. 
Lambo's for everyone. And so what are your alternatives? Your alternatives are just holding your coins through 90% decline, which happens every fucking time, or relying on chart reading and technical analysis. And I'm a pretty good technical trader and I'm just not good enough to consistently get it right under those big balls pressure, like when there's millions of dollars at stake, the hard right edge of the chart. I can't do it. I'm not that good. And like Al told me, Scott, you're just not good enough. Like, we might not see a bull market as strong as this again in our lifetimes. Like every year, crypto becomes a little more mainstream, a little less wild west. And when things get mainstream, those 10,000% years won't be on offer. It'll be just like stocks, 30% is a good year. So the truth is I need a system, so do you. And you don't have time to waste. The market is moving really, really fast right now. It's moving up fast as a motherfucker. These are daily candles. Look at every single day is going up. Every fucking day is going up. You cannot fuck around. If you don't get started right away, this is gonna run away from you. We've had the first sell-off, which is the bear trap. This is the classic model. We've got takeoff, everyone's awareness, the bear trap, and now, we're waiting for delusion, new paradigm. This time it's different. It's not over. Return to, we're waiting for all this. We've got all this wonderful shit ahead of us. You are right here at the bear trap, just past the bear trap. There is no better time to invest because we, we weren't certain here. Now we're certain and the thing's just turned around. You could be forced to chase the market up and buy a Bitcoin at 100, 150, 200 or higher, and it might be too scary to take the plunge. So you're gonna be left on the sidelines. So now is the time you've been waiting for. And let's talk about the price. And I'm, I'm sure you'll agree that for a system that's already made us millions, you charge anything I like for it. You know, if I charge you hundred grand and I guaranteed you'd make a million dollars, you'd do it if, it if it was guaranteed and I was bearing the risk. And there is no doubt that this system has indeed made all those profits. And if you watch me do it along the way, everyone watch me, it's all on YouTube. Um, there's all recorded calls where I show the, the account balances every week. And you saw the increasing account balances and you got a chunk of it yourself. Um, you know, there probably won't be those people still left in the chat now, but if they are, feel free to enter it. I'm not gonna charge you hundred grand. I'm not gonna charge you 50, I'm not gonna charge you 10. And it would be stunning value of five grand. So after some pikers and pukers, there's currently 87 out of the 100 spots filled. There's 13 left. So if you're gonna buy, um, those will all go in the next two or three days. We'll be back up to 100 again very shortly. So if you're ready to buy, just click the link I'm just gonna post. Um, let me post it. Sure, Brian, question. Let me post the link. And I'll take some questions. Okay, got some questions. Anonymous attendee, I have many altcoins. What should I do with your system? What is my suggestion? Is my suggestion is if you really like those altcoins and you're stuck on like this is the coin that I like. I would only hold those, I would hold those coins, but only during when the system tells you to hold the old seasons. Um, it depends how stuck on those coins you are. Like if you really, really believe that Uniswap is the future of DeFi, like that might be something that you want to hold, but you you really only want to hold them when, when we're in an alt season. So anonymous attendee, if I have more than five altcoins, how does the system help you rank all altcoins that you have? This is some trades on a very limited universe. So you should, uh, you should allocate some of your capital to the new system and, and keep some in the altcoins that you have is what most people are gonna be most comfortable. So Brian, I've been at it for a few months. We've been down so far. If it goes up, should we have, would, should we go more go to cash so we have more capital to buy Bitcoin or whatever? Um, no, uh, the risk reward opportunity is very very good here. I would want, uh, I would definitely want to hold from here. If we go below the uh, uh, twenty nine thousand dollar lows, um, almost certainly the system will switch, switch immediately back to cash. So our risk at this point is pretty low. Like we know when we're wrong. 
Um, you know, we can be wrong, it, it can happen. But I'm sure you want a guarantee, and, and here's the best guarantee um, that I can give. I'm promising to time the eventual market top for you. Like, that's what I'm promising. It's a big, it's a big claim. And if I don't do what I'm promising to do, I don't deserve to get paid. So if I don't help you time within a week, either side of the eventual market top, and you can show me that you followed the system for at least a month, and if you're still unhappy with the money you've made, then I'll give you a full refund. Uh, there's a very good question from SOMs Live. Are four tops over 10 years enough to ensure a pattern? Um, no, obviously that's not a statistically significant uh, um, number of tops, but it's not just four tops. Uh, it's also bottoms. Don't forget it's picked every bottom and every top. And because we're dealing with a limited data set where you never have statistical significance, what I did is I took... I developed the system on Binance data with no using no data from other exchanges. And what I did to ensure that I wasn't curve fitting was I plugged that data into other exchanges data. So, th so this is the technique that you use when you're not sure, like you haven't got enough data to be sure. So what you do is you keep some data separate and you and you plug your system into that that data that you didn't use to use the system. So after after we saw that not we developed the system on Binance, it worked on Binance, it could just be curve fitted to Binance, right? So what I did is I took that same system, plugged it into KuCoin, it works, plugged it into, into Bittrex, it worked, plugged it into Coinbase, it worked, plugged it into uh, Kraken, and it worked. So because it works on, on everyone, we can be reasonably sure. Uh, anonymous ND, attendee, AABE reached 666. Do you think this type of coin can go back to that price at least? I think a bull market high will almost certainly have every single major coin higher than it was at the main peaks. And some of them are going to be 10 times as high. So, um, so I, think it's, I think the odds are extremely high that you're going to see more than 666. And I think that there's a reasonable chance that you're going to see a couple of grand for it. Um, I believe I can do all the things I promised today and I'm prepared to stake my reputation and my money on that. Let's be brutally honest here. The system is working so well. It's not because I'm so smart, but because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like that's really all it is. The rocket's going to the moon. All we have to do is walk on. If you don't take this opportunity right now, you might never see a bull market this powerful. And I'm serious about that. I've never seen a bull market as powerful as this. I know it's scary action, taking action, especially right now. But if life hasn't given you the outcomes you want and you want to change it, it's up to you to take action when opportunity knocks. Like, like this is the time, this is our year, and let's fucking get some. I'm buying more. I bought more at the dip. Um, the, uh, the link is in the chat, and I would encourage everyone who hasn't got the system to buy it because it's going to make you a shit ton of money, and, I, and uh, I promise you that. So I got one more question. So if guys like us will cash out if Bitcoin dips below 29, what if there is some external attack or systemic issue, like massive regulations, banning miners or something, that forces a dip and forces a collapse? Okay, so every bull market, you should expect and be happy with bad news. Um, there's an old saying about bull markets that they climb a wall of worry. Like China banned Bitcoin mining. China's banned Bitcoin multiple times. It doesn't kill it. So you want to see bad news. You know, a bad news will not, has not ever killed a bull market. Did, look at all the bad news in the stock market, which is now into a 12 year bull market. We had like the Crimean war, Eurozone debt crisis, Portugal, Greece, um, a fucking plague, Donald Trump being elected, Brexit. If you think of all that bad news, did any of that kill the stock market? No. Uh, did any of the FUD, the Tether FUD, um, you know, I mean, Tether looks like a scam to me. Um, you should see bad news. Bad news, is, bad news is what you want to see in a bull market. Um, you should be concerned when you don't see any bad news in a bull market. When at the top of the bull market, we, we know what tops feel like. Tops feel like um, 
like there's nothing wrong. This is a slam dunk. We're definitely going to get some. And it doesn't feel like that now. So, uh, so logically, it's not a top. Cool, guys. Well, I've taken up shit a lot of your time. Three hours. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, really go to uh, um, bit.ly forward slash Scott Crypto System. Um, yeah, you should do it. You should definitely do it. See you guys. Thanks for your time today.